Welcome back to Strong's Garage. Yeah, you got Matt, Jim here, and the latest catalog for the Motor Car Supply Company. Yeah, which will may, come in handy. Maybe wondering today's a Saturday. What's going on? Yeah. Here? Well, if you haven't already, Scott at Cold War Motors put out a video. Yeah. Go doing, watch it. Get yeah. some context. Yeah. His '37 Chev, which we sold him, uh, which had a bum cylinder. Other yeah. than that, the car was perfect. Yeah. Beautiful and '37 thousand original yeah, mile. None car. of the warranty was voided by that bum cylinder. <laughs> that was the state yeah. of it. But anyway. We helped him, we put a sleeve in it. So Scott has the whole kind of broad yeah. spectrum of putting that sleeve in. So we thought we'd just take a second and just hone in on some of the tools. No yeah, pun the intended. the tools <laughs> in the trade, yeah. So Motor Car Supply Company catalog. They were a tool distributor and stuff from uh, Alberta here, it looks like. This catalog's from 1936. But uh, the machine that we used is in this here catalog. It's the Storm S50 boring bar right there. Yeah. So we used that. There it is doing a Model A right here. And um, the stormizing machine. Yeah, yeah, stormize your engine. The cutter head's patented in the teens. Yeah. yeah. So, and... but this will just give you some context of the tooling that was involved. Yeah. And again, yeah. this was an exercise just to say we could. Yeah. Um, we'd left the doing car. It as per. Yeah, like a graduate. You know, you know. Yeah, in the 40s. Guy's mm -hmm. got a bum cylinder. One cylinder. Wrist pin came out, scored it. Yeah, yeah, that's this machine. So. Yep, we know we can pull engines out and you can rebuild them. We do we do that normally too, but this yeah. was fun just to pretend like it was 1940. Yeah. So um, a complete oh. reenactment of a miser with his two-door sedan coming, yeah, coming in, in for with a, a single-cylinder repair. Yeah. <laughs> One cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it was fun to be part of it, and I hope you enjoyed it. And maybe this video will give you a little bit of a background on some of the tooling that was used. So come along, and we'll give you a little tour of the tools. Yeah. Well, here we are. Yeah. Back yet again with more excitement. Yep, this job we talked about doing in our video walk around there the other day has been completed. And if anybody watched the video that Scott at Cold War Motors put out, you'd have seen it completed. Exactly. And if you haven't yet, go check it out at yeah. Cold War Motors. The job of boring, the boring job of boring. Yeah, I don't know how boring the video is, but uh, yeah, it's boring. Bored. Yeah. It got bored. It, it got, got bored. bored. It anyway. got bored. Yes, sir. As you can see, I've said before, but I hurt my ankle quite bad. So I'm laid up now and unable to function like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be doing lots of light yeah. duty, I guess. Oh, yeah, exactly. Lots of show and tell. Yeah, if it wasn't for Jim and my wife I, and my kids, I think I'd be uh, nowhere. <laughs> I, can do, I can't even drive. Yeah. Everything we own has a, uh, a clutch. So, yeah. And Jesse, my wife, she, she been, she'll be coming in more, hopefully doing some work. I'm not on the videos, but working. She's a mechanic. So anyways, <clears throat> here's the box that the sleeve used to be in. Yeah, it's empty. Neat. This is just an empty box. What is it, nichrome, nickel chrome probably? Yeah, nichrome, cylinder sleeve, three and a half inch bore, 3.691 OD with three thirty second walls. What we did was we bored the cylinder out to accept the sleeve with a two thousandths of an inch interference. Yeah, and for those who aren't familiar with the car there, the poor thing sat with uh, coolant in its... Uh, in one hole there. In one hole, yeah, head gasket went and it sat probably since the 80s with coolant and it... Number five, yeah. Yeah, and it just pitted it out so bad, it was probably, what, 80 thou by the time we got him cleaned up. And... Yeah, and you can only get 60 pistons. Yeah. And then the cylinder walls probably get pretty thin by then. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so... But this is kind of cool. So Scott found this uh, cylinder sleeve and uh, we got this old boring bar going. It's a storm. Yeah. Uh, model S50. And the patent date on the cutters is 1916. It uses that six point cutter system, which uh, self centers with the angle of the cutters. It's uh, kind of an archaic, but it functions if your cylinders are somewhat straight, which yeah. they were. And uh, we managed to get this board right perfect, less than a half a thou taper top to bottom with the sleeve, and then zero taper. We honed it to a zero taper perfect finish, two thou allowed for the piston. Uh, clearance yeah. just like factory. it was nice we were dealing with a low mile engine so nothing was worn too far out of spec yeah. it was just the rust that it just caused the rust the... so uh we bored out the cylinder with the machine pressed in the sleeve scott has the whole rundown of that but we thought we'd just take a minute to show you some of the tools that we used so yeah, like yeah. I said, apart from the two tools uh, the, yeah work, these tools but, uh... well i didn't do a whole lot <laughs> i was there in support if we go through our order of operations kind of our first deal was to uh Set bore it. it out to uh Except the new sleeve, so yeah, which was uh, two hundred thousandths of an inch. Yeah, 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 which is a lot. So yeah, so you get this guy in position as such. It's got this really neat clamping fixture, so you do it all in car. No need to take the crank out. But this guy flips down, goes into the cylinder, kicks over, 
tightens up. The, adjacent, the next cylinder it clamps through. Yeah, and then just uh, rests itself on the deck. So as long as the deck's flat, which it was, uh, it'll bore it'll bore perpendicular to the deck. So if your deck's out of whack, your pistons will be out of whack. Yeah. This thing will do from a two and a half to four and a half inch bore, fourteen inches. Yeah. But we were only going what seven and an eighth, seven and a quarter. Yeah, seven and an eighth. And, so. and by the runout at the end. And we took forty thousandths of an inch at a time till the end. And yeah. We did a cleanup cut. And just kind of snuck up on it since. Uh, yeah, we didn't want to. It's a lot morph. easier to take a little more out than it is to add a little more back. Yeah. But you still have to have enough to center it on. Yeah. Because the the way the cutters are angled, they they sit in the bore like that. You lift the machine up, you clamp it, you bring the cutter back, and then you fire it in. Anyway, that's the storm boring bar. They're really interesting. And then uh, we used a few tools in the job. We'll just. Yeah, so we'll show you. Uh, give yeah. you the show and tell on the tools. Yeah, come on over here, Jim. So we use these coffee cups. I use this coffee cup quite a bit. <laughs> you know, um, we got this old AIM cylinder gauge, which uh, measures the uh, measures the cylinder, which uh, works good. It's it's a uh, from 1926, works wonderfully. We used three different sizes of flathead screwdrivers, um, some oil, Gibbs, brake clean, a couple of rags. Uh, coffee cups again. This hone, which is an antique hall hone, which is adjustable. And it, it's really a nice hone. It works really good. And then we use this old sleeve. Uh, oh, hang on a second here. <laughs> this old sleeve installation tool uh, to put the sleeve in. And it worked, it worked awesome. Yeah. And we kept all the sleeves worth of uh, filings. Yeah, so this is incredible. This is uh, a little good for the rose garden or whatever, but... A guy could maybe melt it and uh, put it back into another sleeve. Yeah, make another sleeve out but of that's, it. That's what we bored out of the, the engine block and the uh, sleeve. Yeah, yeah, because the sleeve itself was uh, about 30 thou uh, undersized, so they give you meat to take it back out to where it's got to be. Which was uh, standard on this engine. All right, Jim, there it is. And guess which miracle hole? Yeah, which hole uh, was it? Yes. Uh... Oh, you can see, got the cross hatch. Scott's got a bit of cleanup you can do. Is or you can still, yeah, he's going to finish it at home. He's got to yeah. do a little bit, but this is a rough finish that we. He said he would finish the rest, but there's yeah. the bore. It's right like it should be. Sleeves installed. Yeah, ready for another million years. Oh yeah, and the nice, it's beautiful. It's all standard. Best Everything's cylinder, all now. good. Yeah, worst right? cylinder became the best. The best. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll show you how this cool Ames gauge works, just because it's such a treat to use. Perfect. So it simply threads together. It's been verified, and so... And now, testified. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, and so you just kind of... So handy, you can just kind of sweep and poke and... So our finished bore was just under... Just 350. Just under. Yeah. But it's nice and Beautiful, square, yeah. and that's what he needs. So he can just—he's got a lot of cleanup to do on this engine because there's filings everywhere. But that is the way she goes. Yeah. No, that's the garage repair. Could have been done in 1920 or 1960 in a oh, garage. Oh yeah, but, 1920 uh, or 2020. Yeah, yeah, or 2022 for that matter. 2022, yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, we all we used almost all the tools we used are from the 20s, and uh, that's how accurate it is. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, very of course true. you have to find tools from the twenties that are accurate because yeah, yeah, some of them haven't are been bent worn and out twisted and everything else a million times. And we double checked these against modern mics, yeah, just to make sure that it was all proper. And you know what? It was. So, anyways, it's fun to get out and do this stuff. So we were happy to be able to. It's not everybody that wants one cylinder sleeve, <laughs> but it'll be yeah, a great a car. Market, it'll be a fine yeah. repair. So, yeah, watch Scott's video if you want to see how, uh, the whole process. And we thought we'd just take a minute and show the tools and. Uh, if you're really interested in tools, we're starting a feature thing where we're going to try and do a real in-depth uh, analysis of old tools once a week, go through some catalogs, talk about the tools, and uh, we're trying to do that on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, uh, go over to Patreon. If you want to sign that up, that'd be handy. And if yeah, not, uh, keep, yeah, keep watching and uh, we'll keep repairing.